Hi, I'm Bart Polson, and in this video, I am going over the practice final for Behavioral Science 3010. That's Statistics for the Behavioral Sciences at Utah Valley University. In this video, I'm picking up with question number 28. This one says, which effect size is most appropriate for z-tests? Okay, now in terms of effect sizes, um, eta squared is a, a common choice for the analysis of variance. That's not something we've gotten to yet. We will eventually. Pearson's R is the correlation coefficient, and that can be helpful when you're looking at the association between two variables. That's not what we're doing. R squared um, is often used for correlation and regression. It's also called the proportion of variance explained, but that's not what we're getting into here. Uh, on the other hand, D, which is Cohen's D, that is a very common one for z-test, because in a z-test you're looking at how far to a mean is, a sample mean is from a population mean. And the D is a very good measure for that, because it's, it's like a z-score. It says how far it is, it is in standard deviations. Um, the difference between that and this, the z-score is that the z-score, when you're looking at sample, says how far it is in standard errors. And so because the standard errors is influenced by sample size, that's going to be uh, a different thing. So this one undoes the effect of sample size. So Cohen's D is the answer for 28. All right, 29. Which z-score is closest to the mean? Well, what you want to look for is the one with the smallest absolute value. Because remember, if you're exactly on the mean, you're zero, because it's telling you how, much, how many standard deviations you are from the mean. And it goes out. And so 3.3 is pretty big. Negative 1.2 has a smaller absolute value. Um, 0.02 is nearly zero. Um, and then D is negative 0.6. Okay. Of those, again, you're looking at the absolute value, so just ignore the minuses. And the smallest of those is C, 0.02, which is means a person is only two hundredths of a standard deviation away from the mean. So they're, they're practically on top of it. 30. In a normal distribution, it is very unusual to find scores outside of what range of z-scores. Okay, this is kind of a tricky one. Um, let me pull up a picture of the standard uh, distribution. Okay, I'm going to make this smaller. And uh, here's some small pictures of normal distributions that I've used earlier. Um, minus and positive uh, one standard deviation, that's this part right here in the middle, and that's that's normal stuff. That's normal variation. Zero and ten. Okay, zero means you're right here in the middle, and ten is way up here, and that only is looking at the top half, so that's kind of a weird answer. Uh, minus three and positive three. Okay, minus three is going to be from here up to here, and you see that's almost where it flattens out. In fact, that's uh, 99 point something percent of the distribution. And so, yes, in fact, C is the correct answer. Uh, what you have is that in a normal distribution, it is very unusual, it happens less than 1% of the time, to find scores that are have an absolute value greater than 3, so below minus 3 or above positive 3. 0 and 5 is just, you know, top half. Um, anyhow, so you can ignore that. So 30 is C. 31. If a raw distribution, excuse me, if a raw score distribution has a mean of 12 and a standard deviation of 3, what number would have a z-score of minus 2? All right, so in this case, we're actually going to start with a z-score and we're going to go to an x-score. Let's take a look at our formulas that we had before. And we're going to be using this one down here because we're starting with a z-score and information about the sample and standard deviation, and we're going to go to an x-score. Um, I just got my little piece of scratch paper here. Tell you what, I'll make this bigger so it's a little easier to read. All right, so now what I'm doing is I'm uh, I got I want an x score, and that's going to be equal to um, the mean. Well, how did I have it written here? z times the standard deviation plus the mean. I'll do it in that same way. z times the standard deviation plus the mean. In this case, uh, the z-score is negative 2. That's, they told us that right here. Um, the standard deviation is 3, and the mean is 12. Okay, minus 2 times 3 is minus 6. 
and then we add 12, and what we end up with is, uh, well, minus 6 plus 12 is the same as 12 minus 6, so the answer is 6. And that is answer A right here. So a score of 6 would have a z-score because it's two standard deviations below the mean. So that makes sense. Um, 32, a researcher uses alpha as the criteria or critical value for the maximum probability of incorrectly rejecting the null hypothesis. She conducts a z-test with an alpha of 05 and then finds the p-value is 0 0.02. The researcher should dot, 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 uh, make a decision of some kind. Okay, the important thing to remember here is that we are looking at regions of rejection. And the idea here is you want to set off, uh, when it says alpha of 05, that means the most extreme 5% of the distribution, the top 2.5 and, and the bottom 2.5. And, and if you have a p-value, that is the probability of getting your observed statistic through random sampling, through error where there's no difference, if it's less than 05, then you reject the null hypothesis and you say that there is no difference. So um, our p-value of 02 is less than 05. That puts this uh, observation within what's called the region of rejection. And um, anyhow, fail to reject, retain the null hypothesis. No, that's if it were if the p-value were bigger than 05 and we felt that this was a variation uh, thing. So we just reject. We forget that one. B, reject the null hypothesis. Yes, that's what we're going to do because the value that we have, 0.02, is less than the critical value of 0.05. It's in the extremes part, so that's what we do. Except the other hypothesis, that's a nonsense statement. And then D, none of the above. No, it's B. If your p-value is of, which in this case is 02, is less than your alpha of 05, then you reject the null hypothesis. Okay. 33, which of the following is most sensitive to extreme scores? Well, this is actually similar to a question we did earlier. Um, the mode is not very sensitive to extreme scores. Uh, it tends to stay put because it's the most frequent category. The median is usually not shifted very much by extreme scores. That's a nice thing. Um, we're looking for one that's the most sensitive. That's the range. You may remember we actually talked about the range earlier as being a way of checking for uh, outliers. The range is the answer here, C. Range is more, uh, and by the way, mode and median are measures of central tendency. Range is a measure of variation. Um, and then D, all of the above are equally sensitive to extreme scores. No, that's not true. Um, so the answer for 33 is C. And I'll stop uh, to end this section right here.